Thank you very much, Craig. Um, yeah, I didn't prepare any slides. Um, so I'm just going to give a brief, brief uh, talk on the life of a, a day in the life of a geophysicist um, from my perspective, that is. So I would just like to say good afternoon to everybody. Um, and thank you for allowing me to share my own personal um, journey, my um, work journey. So I have been a geophysicist for about 14 years. Um, I started at the Council for Geoscience. Um, from there, I moved on to the Beers Marine Mining Company. And then for the last six odd years, I've been um, part of the Rio Tinto exploration team. My passion for geophysics, I think, already developed in high school. I've always been fascinated by um, rocks and the natural processes that occur in and around our um, planet. So this um, curiosity and my love for the outdoors led me to go and study geophysics at the University of Pretoria. So studying for a geophysics degree, for those who don't know, is like studying three different degrees. Um, you basically do a whole degree in mathematics, a whole degree in science, and then a whole degree in geology all in one. So it's quite tough, but uh, definitely rewarding. Um, so some of the subjects that I guess you'll encounter um, if you do a pure geophysics degree would be something like uh, your stratigraphy, structural geology, mineralogy, quantum mechanics, Class, classical physics, uh, electromagnetism, gravity, and applied math. So it's quite a wide range of, of different subjects. Um, as I said, for the, for the math, science, and, and geology all in one. So geophysics is a three-year degree, um, but it is recommended in industry to do another uh, honors year. Um, where you start kind of specializing in what you feel you want to do in the future if you want to focus on gravity or mag or processing or electromagnetics. And then these days, um, a master's degree is also almost a compulsive, compulsory, um, especially if you want to, you know, get hired by um, larger mining companies. So that's one of the, the requirements usually um, for, for young geoscientists. The master's degree it can take anything from two to four years. Uh, I think, I guess it depends on if you're doing it part-time or full-time. And in my case, it took five years. So uh, that is a, that's definitely a stretch when you are working as well. And I think I have been very privileged that I've been able to work in a range of different environments. When I worked, I started at the Council for Geoscience, I spent several years basically just staying in the field, um, doing field, uh, collecting geophysics data. If I look back on that, I think it's kind of a, almost a must do for any young um, geophysicist. Doing field work and data acquisition, it gives you a really proper practical foundation. And that's something that you don't necessarily um, get in, in, in university, although you touch on fieldwork um, here and there. I found that later in life that acquisition, data acquisition and spending time in the field also later on when you don't spend that much time in the field, but you work with contractors and that that is really a, you know, it's a strong basis that you need to have. Otherwise, there's then starts to be gaps in, in your knowledge, your practicality. So during my time at the Council for Geoscience, um, as I said, I also completed the master's degree in seismics that I did through the University of the Watersrand. And from this, I got the job at De Beers Marine, which is a mining company that do, uh, they do offshore mining um, off the shore of Namibia. And at De Beers Marine, I was part of the research and development mining team. So that was completely different than my previous job and my day-to-day -day stuff that I did there was developing processing workflows to automate 2D and 3D seismic data that was collected by UAVs on the uh, seafloor of, of the coast of Namibia. 
So this seismic data that we collected and, and processed um, was, was used to predict mining rate, um, gravel thickness, and, and seafloor topography. So this data is then fed back to mining vessels um, to ensure that the, uh, the correct mining tool is chosen for that part of the seafloor where they are going to mine that day or the next week as well as for um, resource predictions and mining rate predictions. So it was quite a, it was a small job, but quite important in the wider scheme of things. I was also privileged enough to go out to sea several times um, with the data acquisition team to learn more about the, how the UAVs worked. So that was quite interesting. I don't have a stomach for the ocean, so that was also quite interesting. I had a massive chance to go down um, in a submarine to explore the sea floor. Um, during my time at the Beers, I went, uh, I went down in a tiny submarine called Jago. That was definitely a, a highlight of my career and a once in a lifetime experience. Um, as part of my work that I did at that stage um, was to, I worked with different software packages um, trying to find a package that most suited the company's needs for what we were doing. And also as part of the uh, research and development team that mostly was uh, consisted out of mechanical and electronic engineers, I got to um, be part of new marine mining technology that was being developed on a daily basis. So that was really something that um, was fantastic. Going from a, a Council for Geoscience into a mining environment was quite a big change for me. Um, the, the change of pace was quite big as well because the Council for Geoscience is quite um, a little bit slower. It's, it's a bit more government. And then if you go into a mining environment, it's there's deadlines and stakeholder management and all of those things. So that was quite a big, a big adjustment. So then since uh, 2015, I've been back in exploration at Rio Tinto. So I work in our genera project generation team, and we also support the various greenfield projects that is uh, that Rio Tinto has in Africa and Eurasia. So some of our things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis is managing contractors. So um, at Rio Tinto, we usually don't um, do our own field work. We, are, we have contractors. I, we do data processing, the various uh, geophysics methods, and then um, data inversion as well. So it's one of the important things that is also integral to our job is sitting with a geologist to integrate the geophysics with the geology, with the drilling data. And we primarily work with magnetic um, data, gravity, time domain EM, IP, AMT, and downhole geophysics. What we do and um, how we do it in the field usually depends on the type of what we are exploring for, and then also the environment that we're exploring in. So usually we'll decide what methods to use based on those, on, on, on those criteria. So we process um, and invert the geophysics data, and we try to understand how the depth sections that we create relate back to the physical properties that are measured on the core and then also the, the geological logging that was done on the core. Um, so rock properties is quite a funny thing. It, it changes with alteration, mineralization, moisture content, and density, which makes it quite challenging. I think sometimes uh, geologists uh, have this picture that we look at our nice uh, colorful images and pick a, a magnetic eye and, and put a drill all day, but they actually there goes quite a, a lot of thought into why we choose to, <laughs> to, to put a drill all there. Um, so other day-to-day -day activities would include, uh, as I said previously, contractor management, which makes it, it takes quite a big chunk of our time. Um, contractor selection, writing up scopes of work, designing survey parameters, um, completing forward modeling to understand the geophysical response that you might expect when you start your fieldwork. Uh, we also test and use different software packages for our forward modeling and data inversion to get different results that we can get to a point where we have a kind of a 
a feel for what what is actually the real what what is the real scenario in the field and then of course once drilling starts um an integral part of a geophysicist's job is to plot the drilling results um, with whatever data we have available to try and understand what the geophysics response that we are seeing, where is that coming from? And this again would aid in um, drill or targeting for, for future for future drill, uh, drill drilling. When we go to the field, we usually go, uh, we manage uh, ground geophysics surveys, we oversee airborne geophysics surveys, um, and just generally go to spend some time with the field team to look at the drilling data, um, the core, uh, and the physical property measurements. The time in the field with the with the project team that's that uh, that is there is, is quite an important part of our job. Um, it's those general around the table discussions that happens on a daily basis. We discuss some possible geologic settings, targeting strategy, um, and things that usually is not so effective over over a, a team school or a or an office discussion. So when you look at the core, um, what you see, what somebody else sees, what you think, what that one thinks, I think that's quite a, a important part of, of where the geophysicists and the geologists start um, integrating their thinking and thoughts. So some of the perks of working in exploration, I would say, is being able to visit remote places. I've had the privilege to work on projects in Southern Africa, um, Uganda, Serbia and Finland. Um, in addition to this, also working with various commodities, so ranging from I've worked with iron ore, uh, sedimentized copper, porphyry copper, nickel, and heavy mineral sands. I think this is for me working for a for a major mining company. I love this because it's I'm always learning something new. I get to see new places that's very remote. And it makes you, I think it makes you grow as a, as a geoscientist um, to do all these, these, different, these different things. So in our company, um, you can either follow a career path to become a, a specialist in your field. So you can work your way up from a project geo going way up to, to chief geoscientist. Um, or if you have enough experience, um, you can branch out into, into other roles like project management or project evaluation. Um, I think working for a major mining company, there's so many different areas that I guess the, the world is wide open for you if you don't want to stay in, in, in specifically in a geophysics position. So I also recently started managing a small copper greenfields project. Um, it's been a steep learning curve for me as well. Um, to learn a little bit more about other parts of the business, like um, managing budgets, planning soil sampling and mapping campaigns, uh, but more managing on the health and safety side, uh, project planning, and then also stakeholder engagement and management. I think that's, uh, that's the new part of my day-to-day -day work that uh, wasn't always really, really there. And then just lastly, I wanted to say that the geophysics community in South Africa is quite small. Everyone knows each other. So I think your reputation is quite important because news travels quite fast. And many, because of this also, uh, many geophysicists find themselves having to go overseas for, for more uh, job opportunities as it is such a small community and there isn't as much work available as there was maybe 10 years ago. And that is about it from me as an overview of a day in the life of a geophysicist from, from my own perspective. Thank you very much.